What's up guys, welcome back. December Q&A, just posted on Instagram and Twitter to get some questions and damn, these questions are rolling in fast. So I'm taking a little break from my practice right now and I'm gonna go through a few of them, give you as many uh, in answers and, and insight as I possibly can, so let's do this. Do you watch other YouTube golf creators' videos? I do, I'm subscribed to the Golf Holics. I watch the Golf Holic stuff, I think it's cool, it's awesome just to see you guys out there playing golf, having fun and obviously I'm gonna go collaborate with them, so that's really, really exciting. In terms of other creators, I don't pay too much attention to them because most of them are more instruction-based. I'll watch it here or there. As a creator, I'm intrigued to see what other creators are doing and how they're engaging with their fan bases and how they're growing their fan bases because there are YouTube golf creators, there's channels out there with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and obviously I aspire to get to that level. So I pay attention to the to the competition, as it were. I feel most of the YouTube golf space is more instruction-based, and that's not necessarily of huge interest to me. I have a great coach, and I work on my, my game with that, so I'm not too inclined to, to watch instruction videos on YouTube more. I'll pay attention to them, because I wanna learn from them and see how they've succeeded and see if I can get to that level as well. Why keep going and pursuing the dream of making it to the PJ Tour after all you've been through? Sometimes I ask myself that question a lot. Why do I keep doing this? I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn, I'm determined, I'm focused. I have a lot of underlying issues. Sometimes I think I, I can't do anything else. So I focus solely on golf and hope that it will pan out. I hope that my work will pay off. And also in terms of like a bigger picture, yeah, I've been through a lot, but everyone has and what you've been through your past your hurts your pains they don't define you they don't limit you i think after all i've been through i had to have that that honest talk with myself a few years ago when i decided to relaunch my career i'm very determined i'm very focused but i'm also very realistic and i understand that as i get older and if i don't see progress if i don't see improvement I'm okay with, with stopping this pursuit, but I'm a grinder. I, I work very hard and I'm making my own kind of luck. I'm doing a lot of things that are creating it for me. This YouTube channel, giving back to you guys, I think has been a great thing that is opening doors for me. Those doors that open only help my career. Short story long, I'm just stubborn. I'm really stubborn, I'm really determined, and I want to do what I love for the rest of my life, and I'm very fortunate that what I love is golf. That means I eventually make it to the BGA Tour, that's what it means, but if I can keep making a living doing what I love, I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep logging the hours of practice because I love that side of it. I love competition. I'm not gonna let what I've been through own me and define me. I've been through hell and back, and I may, I may again, I may struggle some more again, but I'm not gonna let that bring me down or tell me I'm not good enough or that I'm not worth the dreams that I've always had. So I'm gonna keep going and see what happens at the other side of all this work. Here's a cool question from someone back in Ottawa. What's my favorite course courses in Ottawa? Well, I grew up at Highlands, so I think nostalgia-wise, that's probably one of my top courses, and I'll, uh, I made a vlog about growing up there, so check it out right here. That's where I play and practice when I am back in town. My favorite golf course in the Ottawa area is Eagle Creek. I love that golf course. It's just a great tournament golf course. It holds up. It, you can shoot good scores there, but if you're off your game, it's gonna eat your lunch. But I would say Eagle Creek's my top course in Ottawa. Highlands would be my number two course, just because of nostalgia and, and history. That's where I, I fell in love with this game. And then I would say Hunt Club, Rivermead would be my next two. There's a lot of good golf courses in Ottawa, so if you're in Ottawa, get out there and play. I think you mentioned that you played college golf or golf in college, where did you play? I played at the University of Ottawa. I stayed at home. We had a great golf team there. We played all fall in, in upstate, New York, Pennsylvania, basically the, the whole Northeast. We played all NCAA golf from Labor Day weekend, basically to Canadian Thanksgiving, and then we had the national championship in the spring. Yes, I would have loved to have played in the States, but I couldn't afford it. Stayed at home, graduated debt-free, got a good degree at a good university, and played a lot of golf. A rare case of a, of a Canadian university athlete in golf uh, making it into the professional ranks. There's a few of us out there. 
but the, the programs in Canada are getting better and better. So yeah, I played college golf in Canada, University of Ottawa, baby, go GGs. What's your superstition before a tournament and what's the best shot you have hit to this day? What course was it at? Do I have any superstitions before a tournament? I don't really have any superstitions before a tournament. I just have like a routine that I stick to a warm up routine. I always get a coffee for a tournament. I used to try to not drink caffeine before tournament rounds, but then, I mean, I drink caffeine every day, so why why stop drinking it on that particular day? It's almost gonna throw my body off even more. Yeah, no real superstitions. I don't uh, have like a particular ball number that I use for any given round. I make sure my outfits are on point, if that's a superstition. But that's about it. Best shot I've ever hit. I think I have a few. I think they're like, I, I won a tournament in a playoff. I hit an eight iron up a hill, 150 to like four feet, made the putt. So I remember that. That was the Pro-Am at Oakdale in 2014. I hadn't won a golf tournament in five years. So that was a pretty great shot, pretty memorable shot. I mean, I remember all of Q School, my first ever Q School in 2007 for the Canadian Tour. I'm starting to remember more shots from the vlog. I remember the two iron in, in the golf course vlog at Julianton Creek, the two iron I hit under a tree close and then I, I made the eagle a little pitch. So I remember shots from the vlog now more and more than I do from my actual tournament golf. Andrew, when can I come down to Florida and do a plain vlog with you? This is a serious question, but there's the laughing crying emoji in it. Hop on a plane, you can come do a vlog whenever you want. I'm here, it's my off season. I'm here for a couple months just practicing away. So you wanna get down here, get down here. We can play some golf, make a vlog, hit me up, man. Hit me up. When you are on a hole without a balance, all down the left side, and have been missing it left all day, what should be the mindset going into that hole? How do I ever overcome that thought and stripe one down the fairway? So this is a good question. If you have trouble right, trouble left, and that's where you've been missing it, how do you not focus on hitting it in a crap and, and, and get it in play? Well, I'm gonna take a page out of Jack Nicholas's book. Take the club that you know you're gonna hit the fairway with. And if that means going down to three wood, if that means going down to five wood, if that means going down to rescue, two iron, whatever, take the club that you are the most confident in hitting the fairway. Sometimes sacrificing distance is okay if it means you're not gonna be reloading or dropping from a hazard. So first and foremost, swallow your pride, take your medicine and take the club that's gonna hit the fairway. And if that means you have 30 yards less in, or 30 yards more into the green, that's okay because you have a chance to make a par and get the heck out of that hole as opposed to be hitting three from the tee, bringing bogey and double bogey into play. So if there's trouble and you're just not confident and you're, and you're thinking too much about the trouble, take less club, hit the dang fairway, that's all that matters. And quite frankly, if you have no other choice and you have to pull driver, you just have to narrow your focus in so, so, so tight on a target and focus only on that target, only on the target. Don't think about the swing. Don't think about the trouble, but think about a target. Have a good swing thought for me. It's predominantly just my rhythm something that's completely away from technique and more just a feel and you just want to get the golf ball to that target and if you happen to draw it there cut it there it doesn't matter get the golf ball to that target think only about the target fall in love with the target get your head out of the equation and let your body just do it and if it means you hit driver even a little bit shorter because that's what happens that's what happens. You just want to avoid the trouble, do whatever you can to take the X's, the penalty strokes, whatever off your card, focus on the target and just free your mind and go. Andrew, when you're having a bad practice session and have low confidence in your game, is there anything you do or change to start riding the ship? Sometimes you're having bad practice sessions and the smartest thing to do is stop, straight up. If you're really struggling with your action and you're getting frustrated or, or whatever it is, whatever that looks like to you, if you're having a really bad practice session, it's okay to just walk away. I mean, that's like with anything in life. If you're if you're struggling with, with your studies, if you're struggling with, heck, if you play video games, I don't know, if you're struggling with anything or even like, if I'm struggling when I'm editing this and I can't just find a feel for editing a vlog, I just stop, take a break. Like, yes, I know we wanna feel like we need to execute the amount of hours or execute the goal for the day in terms of practice, but sometimes stopping does a lot more good than continuing to just push through the struggle. And, and like that's okay because clearing your mind and if it means stopping and going and grabbing some food or coming back in an hour or just coming back tomorrow, that's probably the best thing to do. But then if, if you don't have that opportunity, if, if you're younger, if you're a junior golfer and you've been dropped off at the course and your parents are coming back in hours, honestly, sometimes what I like to do is I just 
dumb it all down, sh you shake the dust, shake the rust, clear the mind, and I focus only on one easy, easy thing, and that may be rhythm, and that may be just the strike, and a lot of times drills are great for that. If you have a repertoire of drills you can do, you do your drills, you focus on your rhythm, you focus on a target, go hit some putts, go hit some chips. Just, just get away from if it's technically trying to work on the grind and work on the technique, slow it down, think of your rhythm. And that, that's what I do. If you can't take a break, then take a break. That's, that's my advice, take a break. Breaks are okay, breaks are fine. Even right now, like I'm taking a break filming all of this, my session's been okay so far, but even if my session was crappy up until now, I've taken a little break and I'm gonna go back with a refreshed attitude and a short-term memory and I'm not gonna remember the struggle of that 30 balls of technical work because maybe what I'm working on with my coach, it's not not feeling good, it's not translating well, whatever. I went out and I practiced yesterday and I played and, and when I went out and played six holes, my only thought was rhythm. Because I wasn't hitting it great on, on, the, on the practice tee. I was working really hard on what I'm working on technically, but I went into the golf course and I just, no technical thoughts, just rhythm and just play. Just play. If you can't take a break, if you can't walk away, make it fun, play a little game, play some drills, just do whatever you can that's as far away from the technical grind that's frustrating you. I think that's the best piece of advice I can give. The questions keep coming in on Instagram, so this is unreal. I'm gonna flag all these questions because I can answer them in, in further episodes. Thank you guys so much for submitting these questions. I, I wish I could answer them all, but we're over 20 questions now and that would be a long, long, boring vlog. Guys, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for, for being part of this channel. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, being subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these upcoming Q&As because it is something, it's really fun to, to engage with you guys and answer these questions. I'm going to get back to the practice tee, so I will see you guys in a few days because the Jamaica Open, I'm leaving on Wednesday. You're seeing this probably, I've already left. I'm probably already in Jamaica while you're seeing this and I'm probably playing a tournament right now. Make sure you subscribe because you're gonna see in a couple days how I play. See you guys later.